watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, the Hoosier Garage. And our next big Hoosier Garage project would be the 72 Duster. Many of you have followed precisely just for this car. And we're, we're working towards it. Um, I have been collecting some parts for it. That's a good thing. We actually have uh, an engine lined up. We have some seats lined up because it didn't have a front seat at all in it when I got it. So we got a deluxe bench seat from a 72. It's going to go in it, but I'll have to reupholster it and all that kind of stuff. But uh, one thing that I'm really uh, kind of delayed on right now is I need to build dolly mounts for it. Now you could do uh, a uh, rotisserie, which I'd like to do that down the road. I was kind of thinking of it here about a month ago, but I'm like, yeah, I'll pass on that for right now. But it's, if anything, it needs dollies right now so I can take the rear axle out of it with leaf springs and all that stuff and you can move it around. Another reason I need the dollies is for obviously this thing is a big rust bucket right now okay so we need to have it dust blasted. That's the avenue I decided to go with it. Um, and the gentleman that I talked to was going to do it he said get that thing at least at the very bottom of it three feet off the ground. Dollies, some steel, some welding, and get the thing high enough off the ground, tie it all together somehow, or at least sections of it together so that we can move it around, he can come and blast it, and then we can go up from there. Okay, so after taking a quick measurement of where the holes are, on this uh, frame, on the duster, where the K-frame would bolt up, and going obviously a little bit over so you'll have some something to bite into for your bolts. Let's say the uh, the bolts would go in right through here. Want well, to give us that little extra on the ends? 15 inches is pretty pretty sufficient. Now the K-frame doesn't fit on a on an angle on one side, so it's just a pretty flat piece right there. So we could use flat angle, uh, box tubing, although not preferable, I don't think, in this situation. Uh, we can worry about this piece first, and ultimately, we'll want to come down as a T-shape with something, whether it be that tube, or pipe, whatever, or another piece of angle, or another piece of this square tubing. And then we can run some gussets up here somewhere without interfering with these holes. So maybe something like this here. I'm not sure yet. I mean, that's what that little stuff, the little angle I got could be. Then ultimately we'll put maybe a flange on here or just weld a flange that has the, the wheel on it, like so. Okay, so I made a couple of decisions here. Um, like I said, this was my only piece of this left. And I like the length on it that we have. And it's at two by two outside. So I'm gonna use that as our upright. This, I cut it down to our 15. This is that big piece of long angle that I had out there. So I got two of these cut. I'm gonna to have to source another one of these or I'm kind of like symmetrical minded. I like to have matches. I don't wanna put something, even though it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna go with this, and I'll just source another piece here soon. I'm gonna prep this one up. This one will ultimately up the center here in the middle, but I gotta clean all this up. I've since upgraded to gas welding, and uh, one thing I do remember about that is it must be very clean. So I'm gonna take our flappy wheel, we're gonna mark some areas here where it's gonna have some joints, and get it nice and cleaned up, and uh, get some welding going on.
All right, so that's uh, mostly cooling off. And you saw right here on this weld, it started out a little cool. That's why it's so uh, kind of, it bubbles out. And I increased the heat on it, the voltage. It did a little better on the sides. As far as welding with gas, I'm a little more used to welding with like a heavy duty, like 480. Uh, that's what I used to do professionally. And it'd been a while, so we're getting this thing dialed in. It went pretty good down there on that side. And then I went around on the back seam here. That's where it really looked pretty good. So we're getting better at dialing it in. So while that's setting, I'll, I'll put some gussets on there. But before I put the gussets on, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, get ahead of myself. So I want to get these holes drilled. Now you could go across here and get it this way with a, a variety of measuring tools. But I kind of determine it's about just a hair over 12. So it's about 12 and an eighth. But fortunately, I have over here a factory K frame laying about. So probably the best way to do, instead of going to the center of the hole, you go from the top edge of the hole here to the top edge of that hole. And put it right up against there, like so. Right there. over so you got 12 and an eighth so that way we just measure off of one end you know we got the 15 inch piece so you come in about an inch and a quarter off one end you know you're in the safe there unless you really want to center it you can figure that out a little shallower here than it is here but I came in and then measured it, took a straight edge off this side, like our framer square, marked it, marked it, found center of this one, marked it this way and that way. So I just started with an eighth inch bit, and we will go up to our step drill and enlarge the holes until we get to the big size. And the big size would be for the shoulder, right down here where my fingernail is, these little notches. That's where it would have to seat up in there if you're using the K-frame bolts. So this looks like it should take care of it at the largest setting. So we'll put this in the drill. This is a brand new one. This works really good. It's a Milwaukee brand, about 45 bucks. But uh, actually there's something I did here a couple weeks ago. See all these holes? I'm making my own muffler cores and mufflers for some side pipes. And this thing did every bit of that large uh, three quarter inch hole and then I did the rest with a chisel and a cutting wheel. Got the holes drilled. <clears throat> and you can see them right there. It's ready to go. I would like to establish some gussets on here in case you move it and it doesn't have any uh, kind of horizontal shift and then it wants to vertically kick this out and bend it and snap it or something like that. So. These pieces I bought at the junkyard the other day, I would like to use them. They're a little thicker and we've got whatever length we need here. So what I want to do, I don't think it's that effective to run it on the inside of where the bolt holes are. Okay, it's just, it's too short and you have all this down here, it could do something weird. Uh, so I decided to run it where you can put the bolt inside of here, but we want to put it on the back side so this isn't in the way, okay? So, I flipped it around, like so, and you can see this mark here and this mark here. So we're gonna have to cut this off, but I put it, I lapped it up over the top of the, uh, the upright here and just shifted it until I got the corner here, the very, very corner of the angle, and it would come down like that. And then I just simply marked it. Flipped it around to the exact same thing here. It's going to be a shorter throw because I have a little angle. So if you look at the under belly of a, uh, at least an A body on a Mopar, it kind of goes upward. There's a little incline to it. So this will be, it might fit both ways, but it'll be for one side, the other side will mirror image this one. And I did the exact same thing over here. So I made sure it was tied up against it and then it'll mark there, okay? So I'm gonna take a cutting wheel, slice this one off, this one off, 
and then we'll prepare uh, probably two of these, cut them down, make them fit, make them look good, and get them in there. We'll have to clean all this up after we cut these off. Something like that. Now I need to make sure the bolt will fit through there. So let me grab the bolt. I want to be able to put the length of it through there. So that would sit about there. Right, well, it's really close to here, but should at least if you had both of them loose, you can crawl them out of there. So make sure it works again. We're gonna do the same thing over here, just trim that little corner up, and we should start getting a measurement for these, cut them down, be ready. Okay, so you can see this gusset is on here. It is completely welded on, ready to go. And I went ahead and sized this one up. They're not gonna be completely together. I just way I did it so that I can keep all the, the weld here. So if I brought this one around, I'd have to cut it around. So I just brought it where it's up here. And so what you wanna do, you wanna, Mark out all your areas, like this sets here, like so. Okay. Should go this way, my bad. Like so, and then you mark out here, mark here, all the way around on this piece, up on this piece, and then take your flappy wheel and buzz all that clean so that you have nice clean metal. Like this spot right here, still a little rusty. So that when we go to run a weld inside of there, it'll be clean on clean, right? All the way up around here, down the side, up and over. And then like you got it there. So I'm gonna get all that welded up and that'll pretty much complete this upper section. We can worry about the wheel and the, the platform down there a little later. And now a classic Indiana car commercial. A simple shopping trip without the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages could be an unforgettable experience. You could end up going in circles or going no place fast. And getting there, too late. Going down one blind alley after another. Why go through that when you can go through Indiana's most complete shopping guide? Before you leave, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. You could win a 1981 Mercedes-Benz. Just listen to win the Mercedes of rock and roll on WFBQ FM Q95. We're for Indiana. We're for you. I got this on eBay. I'll show you what it is. And you can make these. I would actually probably encourage you to make them, but I got so much going on, I figured I'll... I'll pay $25 and have these shipped to me a week later. So that's what I did. And they are basically attachment points for our wheels. Of course, they're wrapped many times over, but just little base plates, right? They already got holes drilled in them. And the holes, there's four of them here, one for each leg. For the wheels over there, you know, you, you weld them onto your wheel dollies and they have adjustable slots on the wheel part, a little flange, and get you some nuts and bolts and we'll just bolt them on there. Uh, the holes are already in it, which at this point is good because remember my, my beautiful super duper bit, step bit, burn it up. Now, don't throw them away. You can't sharpen them. There's actually videos on YouTube how to sharpen them. I need to do that, but not right now. So this will work right now. It's great. It's already cut. I don't have to, you know, sling steel everywhere. I got the pickling oil on them. That's cool. These come out of somewhere out of Los Angeles. So, you know, West Coast custom stuff here. And 
And uh, so I'm gonna give me a little bit of energy together, put one of our legs that we just working on up here, and uh, I'll tack them on. And then um, those, well at least that one, I still gotta get some steel for those though. And it's on the way, I actually ordered a piece of that. I couldn't find any of it locally. None of the steel places are in here. Like the fab shops, they're like real flaky. They, you'll call them, they go, yeah, we might get, we'll call you back, and then you never hear from them again. So, screw that, I'll just order some. So I ordered a custom bit from uh, Midwest Steel. It'll probably be here next week. But in the course of this video, it don't really matter because you're seeing it all at the same time. All right, I got our dolly up here we've been working on. Now when I cut this piece, I cut it with the cutting wheel, so it wasn't like I cut it with a nice square bandsaw. So it needs to be squared up a little bit because the plate will be on there crooked if it's not. So I ran a piece of tape around it, nice and even. And you have this little bit of axis, this little dark piece from outside the green that needs to be shaved down. So I have a, uh, a cutting wheel here. And you can do the uh, flappy wheel, whatever you got. Grinding wheel, whatever and just smooth this down until it's in shape with the green tape that goes all the way around. And uh, just take a minute to do that, that way you don't have any crookedness and then it'll have some bias to your your leg, which will ultimately well, possibly throw it off and give it a little bit of a, a wonky kind of a set to it and might cause trouble. So if anything, at least for your weld, it'll be up there nice and flush. It won't have all this O-ring on it. And it'll just be a much better job working. So you should be able to take one of these plates and stick it on there and it looks pretty good. And you can always take a small framing square and just see around each of the four corners if it doesn't look crazy. And uh it's pretty good really. It didn't take much. So you kind of get the picture. So that one's pretty good. We can go with that. And we'll just want to center it up on there. You can maybe take a scrap piece of this stuff and center it. Mark around it. That way when you go put it up on there, you might not have a good way to clamp it, but at least you can hold it and get a tack on it. Make sure if you put a tack on it that you continue to press against it while that cools down for at least, you know, five seconds. Because if you don't, you might put a tack on it and it's gonna go, it's gonna lift out because that's what welds do. They like to pull and that's where you need jigs and stuff to hold everything together, ideally, so that it don't walk away and then you have a nice crooked and you're back where we was trying to eliminate anyways with the side of this. Hold on there and then go to the opposite side, get a tack on that, and then you should be ready to start tacking around as well. And we can hear the song so clear in the morning just before we wake. Then the music is lost to us. Lord, help us as we go about our day. We take care of each other. We take care of each other. been moments in time when everything was right yeah and they linger in my mind like a string of lights but you run to your hopes and friends for protection and I to my guitar so afraid to let the other one in Exactly where we are Still we take care of each other Yeah, we take care of each other We take care of each other When we can
sections as to add stability and uh, keep the legs from being you know if you hit a little bump it don't want to tear your body up or anything it'll all go in unison kind of like a full frame so some cases they make like a, a piece of square steel that they weld on here and then a bar slides through it and then you run a, a screw in it and it holds it into place whether it be a hole or it's got a, like a point on it to, to dig in there and I'm just trying to think what's a good simple way to do it and it to be sturdy and able to do what we want so you know obviously we have one of these on one side the other side this bar would run across here like a piece of tube and kind of give it like an h an h frame so to speak and then ultimately you can tie this rear section with the front now we'll do the same thing in the front too just like this it's basically two pieces of ankle angle opposing each other and then I've got my cross tubing and it'll set down in there. Now my plan is to, much in the way there's a hole here, down here on the end, we'll have a hole drilled all the way through this side to this side and it'll go all the way through this piece. So there'll be four holes total um, and a bolt with a nut, like a lock nut or something can go all the way through this out the other side and you can screw it on and add a hold it and this will kind of help any twist just kind of keep it all in place so it doesn't want to collapse over so these will help keep them in check and if it becomes a problem later we can always just take another piece and weld right over the top of this and this will slide inside of it like a slot okay so i welded this one on around here here and then on the sides i didn't weld it in there just to keep it from uh so it'll be nice and square and you didn't have a big lumpy weld in there. So uh, it's weld on all perimeters except for the insides. So I'm gonna cut some more of these little pieces. They're just over two and a half inches wide. And uh, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We gotta do six more of them. And uh, yeah, so they'll be ready to weld on there and we'll, We'll be pretty much on the road. We just got to get our steel for our last front dolly. But we get everything else ready to go. We should be pretty good. All right, so first things first, after I cleaned all the metal up, our new pieces here, I basically have the sides that will touch the body or the, the tube. And then the sides that will have the new tube go inside of it and then the edges. So that's what's going to weld directly to the two. So I want it level or square or plumb with this one. So if you do it this way, this should work. Make sure that they are parallel. Sorry. Make sure they are parallel. They're not in to give you the false reading. And then pick your pieces up that you dropped on the floor. And you can square them up like that. I'm going to move you all over here and lay our tube between them. See where that hole is, is the center on this particular piece. I'm going to push it right up against this side so there'll be a slight gap here. Put it up against it and just drag it off just a little bit.
make sure your gap is parallel. It's not wide on one side. That should work there. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use this piece here. Alright, we'll get our clamp. It's already been adjusted for the tube. And our piece. Fine tune it there and make sure it's kind of squared up on the tube. And there we have it. If anything, you want to at least get it tacked. So I'll tack it. And go to town with it. So if you notice the atmosphere around here looks a little different, a little brighter. It's during the day now, the next day after what you just saw, because I ran out of wire as I was starting this well last night. So we refreshed the wire, got it in the machine, went ahead and put a fresh tip on the uh, the nozzle there so I think we'll go ahead finish this weld up put the box in there and get the other piece in okay so ultimately this will be mounted to the the car, right, up in where the leaf spring was, the, the front eyelet. So kind of underneath where the passengers would be sitting. Where my fingers point here, that'd be the front of the car that way, all right? So if we have the other one here, like so, let's put a little space between it. Kind of like so. Our tube, We'll have a hole drilled all the way through this tube, all the way through this tube. Same thing on here, one on each end, all the way through, all the way through. And set it here like that. You run the bolt through, put a nut on the back side, and I'll give you kind of an H uh, system here. Got a little bit of play there so that you have some movement if you're on an uneven surface, trying to put it in. But it'll be enough to help hold it, to bind it so that it doesn't want to just fall over. Now if you have just bolts in there without the clamps, like I said, it might do that. If, let's say this fails somehow. It shouldn't, but that's one thing about making safety and preparing for it. So that's what we got there. Now on the front leg, since we've only got one full dolly made for the uh, one side, I, I don't know, I think it's on the passenger side, we need the other side to complete this system. But I can go ahead and at least get the two of these on the one post welded on and then we just mash it when we get the other one built. And then we should be ready to go. Take a look at another great channel. All 
All right, so we got those all welded up. These have been ready, the rear ones. But with their height, the height that I need to get it to for them to blast this thing properly, it's pretty high, it's pretty tall. Most standard dollies that anybody would make or you buy would be this part here where it mounts to the leaf spring eyelet. It'd probably be down here somewhere. Okay. So we're a lot higher, which means you're technically going to have to get the body of the car quite a bit higher as well. Poses a few issues with it like this. Really sketchy, just be careful. I put a, uh, it's actually a hot tub stair step. Very heavy kind of thing right there in front of the jack. So my thinking is, is that if this thing, if I go up and it decides to slide on those frame rails, it should peg right into that. And if there is a fall, like I said, be careful. Keep yourself clear from everything. Don't get right up underneath it where it'll take your knees off or anything like that. Or it'll swing to the side, make sure nobody's around it. Be safe, think safe as much as you can, given if you have limited possibilities. Just think it out. If anything, it'll slide forward and stop. It might land back on these jacks. We'll see if it does happen to do that. So we'll leave it on here if it does happen. So you'll see, it might go. There's a better way with what you got. And that's fine. We're gonna be real about it here. Some, some channels won't show you that, but if we get through with it good, you know it's careful self-supervision you can take care of. Quick look at it, see what's going on. I made a little bit of noise. I think it's settled somewhere. All right. It's more than enough, I can tell it's going to go up there. I'll get away from it in case it does fall. This here is just in case it does come down, it'll have at least the thickness of my body to fall on it. Now, in this case, yeah, it might rack the body, it might tear it up, it might ruin this car, but ultimately, remember, we are more important. Obviously, the best thing to have with this is some kind of a crane or a forklift. This is what we got. Like I said, be super uber careful. If you're wondering what all of this white stuff is, it's phosphoric acid that's dried. It just turns into a powder doing some sampling on this, the inner structure where it didn't get any paint originally. It had been rusting for years, I mean, heavy surface rust. For the most part, it takes it away after a couple coats. The deep root and stuff obviously is going to stay a long, longer, and that's where the dust and splash can come in. But some places where it gets into the seams, it can set in there, especially during wet weather. You know, really take a lot of that rust out that gets in the lap joints that you can't get to otherwise. I'm going to take a minute and just reflect and 
and ultimately we'll set this down. everything come around here with this engine hoist and do the same thing up in the front um, at this point I think it'll be safer to get it up because we've got one part of it's already very stable it's on the ground it's bolted uh, in some cases I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to run a cross base from here up to where the, one of the holes is right here there's two holes right there you can maybe run a bolt to it you get some extra steel that way when you heater it it won't put all the pressure in want to kick it out. Be really easy with it, it'll be alright. So a few things I had to do here, and I apologize if there's a little blur in the middle of the camera. I need to get a new lens for the GoPro. Must have got a spark on it. Let's see if you see it. A couple little things I'm gonna show you. In order for this thing to fit, basically your socket, because you really couldn't get a adjustable wrench on it, I would have had to notch this out pretty good. We still have the stability back on the back side and it curls back around here. Or flush there. I'm going to have to relieve this a little bit because see we have a gap it's because of this bracket here and so I'll probably can make a cut or it'll bend a little bit and then you can compress this back down but otherwise right now it's actually very sturdy had to do the same thing on the opposite side because they're pretty much designed the same it's a little tighter over here I imagine I would have had a little trouble here but it was actually had more of the trouble than I thought uh, as far as the getting a wrench on there and I just went ahead and made it deep enough to put the socket on the breaker bar. This was pretty tight. It is against that, but it is, it did give a little bit, so that's okay. And then, uh, like I said, this side. So just for the aesthetic, we'll clean all this up. I'll trim that other side over there. And we're pretty much ready to set this thing down. couldn't find any wheels locally like this, eight inch wheels that lock. I'm sure I could have ordered some for a big shipping fee, but I'm just gonna make some wheel chalks that you can stick underneath it out of wood or something. And then you can just roll it around. It's pretty simple. Pretty stable. Obviously be careful with it on everything. It's not, you know, it's sitting that high. So it 
probably could tip over if you caught it on one side and really pushed it. Uh, it could barely fit in the garage, I believe. I measured it, it's about two inches uh, to where the garage door is just where it's resting. edge of my garage floor it sets up probably about a quarter of an inch there you have it so really the next thing that we need to do is call the man that does the vessels blasting Go to town on it. Hopefully we can get that on video. Uh, one good thing since it's the side, I can check underneath to make sure all the brackets, anything that is still connected under there possibly, that we can get it off. So it'll have a nice clean blast to it. Really the only areas that you suffer not getting it, uh, the treatment, is directly underneath where these fit, and back there where the pad for the leaf spring mount. But that could always be you know, kind of done later or however you need to do it, maybe with some acid like uh, phosphoric or whatever, clean it up real good and go from there. So with that said, thanks for watching the Hoosier Garage. Make sure you check out more on the 72 Duster and the 72 Van. We got a little bit more to do on that. And thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and share with your friends. So take care.